Welcome to Who Knew. We are fans of the current series of Doctor Who, and here we discuss our likes, dislikes, and insights into the modern regeneration of the show. Today's episode is Army of Ghosts, episode 12 of season 2. Rose says that they keep trying to split them up, but they never, ever will. Never say never, ever, because never arrives today. <laughs> this episode is written by Russell T. Davis, directed by Graham Harper, and it first aired on the 1st of July, 2006. It was watched by 8.19 million viewers. Hi, this is Eugene. Let's go around and introduce ourselves. Hi, this is Brian. Hi, y'all. This is Kelsey. Hi, this is Auburn. Hello, this is Frank. We are Sans, Arlene, and Josh. We miss them both. Rose recaps her adventures with the Doctor and how she thought it would last forever. But then came the army of ghosts, Torchwood, and the war. This is the story of how she died. Best cold open right. <laughs> in the series of Doctor Who. I like it too. I The first time I watched this, I like, what? <laughs> and then every time I see it, I just get sentimental now. I remember it yeah. being very impactful the first time I watched it. I think it's weird how it opens with a voiceover and in school, you're told not to start things with the voiceover, but yet this one works. Well, I think it works here because we, we know Rose enough that, mm -hmm. you know, we, we know. know her story, we're invested in it, and... Yeah, where we start listening as soon as we hear her voice yeah. disembodied by... And, and I mean, this is different. This is a TV show rather than a movie. But still, the first thing I remember, like, what? They're starting with a voiceover. That's really good. This is actually working. <laughs> but it's also a great visual recount of her travels with the mm -hmm. Doctor and showing Eccleston, the Ninth Doctor. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was that really was a good. great touch, I thought. I was surprised that they did that even back then because Eccleston's relationship wasn't as good you know great but it was still the doctor yeah so i'm really glad they put it in mm -hmm. maybe that's why it's so short yeah i think rose or billy piper looks amazing in that opening sequence like she never looked that good mm. and then it really is impactful like it looks different it's more somber like with the voiceover and yet the visuals are great like the wind is blowing through her hair and then like the lighting is perfect and all of that i'd be interested to see the script and see if that was in the script or if that was something that was added mm -hmm. later in post it could be because nothing maybe, looks like that again. Yeah. I also like that they throw in a shot of a planet. They're standing on a planet, and we don't know what that adventure was. <gasps> I know. I want to go back to that planet. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I mean, it's but, something we've said previously. Yeah. And it's great that we actually see that rather than them talking mm. about it. Yeah. They really do hint at there's a lot more going on than we actually see in the TV episodes, which I really like that. Mm -hmm. And in that same scene, the doctor asks her how long she's going to stay with him forever and he's okay with that and he yeah. you know mm -hmm. it's like he's gotten past that other we have a relationship but we can't have a relationship because you're gonna die at one point but it seems like he, that look that he gives her you know they've gotten over that it's like we are somehow going to be together forever mm -hmm. yeah. whatever that whatever forever means but he's accepting it it seems in that look it reminded me of the scene later in this episode that Jackie has with Rose mm -hmm. inside the TARDIS. And I think uh, having that scene at the beginning makes that conversation um, more impactful. But mm -hmm. I didn't recognize right. it at the time. But now I'm like, oh. No, it, it, that it does part. tie together. It does tie together. <laughs> <laughs> Also, one thing about her monologue is she says the first 19 years of my life, nothing happened. I'm like, really? Nothing Nikki? happened? <laughs> I mean, I get what they're doing. They're, they're making her adventures with the doctor seem that much more great by saying normal life, nothing happened. And she got years. that gymnastics medal. Yeah. But Come on now. I'm just like, really? Nothing happened? <laughs> And uh, in that shot where it, it cuts from Eccleston's doctor to Tennant's doctor in the TARDIS, the TARDIS is super green. I don't know yeah. if anybody caught that. Oh, the lighting inside. The lighting inside, yes. Yeah. The console. There's a lot of, yeah. There, I think they had two. Two cinematographers. Cinematographers yeah. for this. And one of them really liked the green. It's and the other one, one didn't. <laughs> <laughs> The TARDIS arrives on Earth, and Rose is excited to see her mother. After they hug, Jackie tells her that Rose's granddad is coming for a visit in a few minutes. Rose cautiously reminds Jackie that he is dead. So how can he be here soon? Jackie says to ask him herself. As a shadowy figure shimmers into the apartment, they run outside and see ghosts all around the neighborhood. Jackie tells them that they won't last long. Across town, a machine at the Torchwood Institute is turned off and the ghosts fade away. A woman congratulates her team for high measurements of ghost energy. Did you mention that the doc, or no, Jackie kisses the doctor? I love yeah, Jackie just smothering him with kisses. Yeah. yeah. She's happy to see him, but she's also happy to be annoying him. Yes. <laughs> 
he tries to get away and she's like no you don't yeah. <laughs> or something like that very very different from echo slapping his face mm. <laughs> they've come a long way yeah yeah i also kind of like how they come out of the tardis and she's got the backpack mm-hmm. on and it's just kind of like normal mm-hmm. it's very normal it's like okay here we go laundry is on my, yeah. you know, my backpack and we're just going home and she's got a little gift for her mom which is actually pretty useless <laughs> you, know, you travel to an a- a- alien planet and you yeah. bring back this thing that's basulium basulium which is you know hot when it's going to be hot and cold, cold. when it's going to be cold pretty useless but thanks it's a it's a, it's a weather it's a weather it's, predictor it's pretty cool yeah but it's one of those um tourist traps it's like here's a trinket exactly there you go but it also reminded me of like my mom when uh i would come back home and she was like you have laundry that i can do (laughs) you know she's looking for that it's not like Mm -hmm. rose is just like unloading onto her mom here's laundry please do it (laughs) it's more of the mom being willing to take on that task yeah well we were mentioning that jack even started kissing the doctor and was grateful for him to be back but it it added to the normalcy like they were just on this hiking trip or whatever and they're both back they both come in with smiles everything's good they're especially after the cold open where rose says this is the story of her dying now we see them as this big happy family you know we went from a low point to a high point and now we're gonna see how we get from there to rose's death yeah i was also reminded in that moment when jackie is greeting them um I went back to that episode with uh, Absorbaloff. Uh, What's that episode? Uh, which episode? Love Monsters. In Monsters. Yeah, where Jackie defends them even though they're not there. Right. And then she defends both of them and keeps their secret. At, um, yeah, from Elton. She was greeting them. It reminded me of that scene. Like, mm-hmm. I loved how she said when they're outside looking at the ghosts, well, he's not happy when I know something he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great little bit. <laughs> Wanted to point out that there's no Trinity Wells in the news footage montage. And I was yeah, kinda, I noticed that too. I was kind of hoping I would see her. Yeah. Even though I know she's not there. Do you know Who's why? Trinity Wells? Uh, she is the, the go-to American news anchor that they always go to. I don't know why I said <laughs> oh, that. Oh, in the Doctor Who episodes? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this one, she's not present. And Frank, you know why? No. I don't Did know. Leading have... into you going, no. and why? I'm sure it's scheduling conflict. She was busy doing something else. Was... Probably because Americans would be too busy trying to shoot through the ghosts. <laughs> and make money off of them. <laughs> well, everybody was doing that, yeah. all the commercials. <laughs> uh, there's also really, really great music when they go running out to see all the ghosts outside. Um, it's even more driving than the Doctor's theme, I think. Yes. But yeah, so this music is uh, really, really good and and will be used quite a lot because it will actually become the soundtrack for the Torchwood TV show. Oh. Yep, that's our introduction to it. And it's actually in this episode called the Torchwood theme. Oh, nice. And so it will continue to be the Torchwood theme. And around. Really, really good music. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, I did think it was interesting that as Jackie is telling about the the grandfather coming back and the ghosts... um, also in that cold open, Rose mentions uh, that the doctor took her in this magical machine to all these different worlds. But we still see Rose is a skeptic along with the doctor. Um, you know, like, of course, the dead can come back. You know, mm-hmm. like they've seen much more fantastical yeah. things than ghosts. But she stays skeptical and um, inquisitive, scientific. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think that's it. That mm-hmm. she's like, this. these are not dead people coming back to life because I've actually seen it when dead people have tried to tell us that they're coming back to life and it turns out to be not, something, not yeah. that and something mm-hmm. bad. So I think it's, it's, it's natural that she's skeptical of this mm-hmm. because she is going to think it's a trick. And also for them, it's new. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's like shocking. Like everybody else went through panic and trying to figure out what's going on. So that's what they're going through. Yeah, you're telling me that, but that's not what I'm feeling. And that's not what I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this scene reminds me of the World War Three episode where they go back and it's normal, but then something not normal happens. And I think this also happens with um, the, the Sladeen episode where they, they Eccleston is supposed to bring her back 12 hours later or something. And mm-hmm. then it's 12 months. It's 12 months. And then Rose has gone missing and they're, they're walking around like it's normal. And that's how I felt with this episode. She has the backpack. She's just going home mm-hmm. and everything's normal. And then all of a sudden the ghosts are introduced. And we get that in another episode in season two. The, um, when they come back from the Cyberman episode after uh, she sees Pete. alternate Jackie die, yeah. she comes back and it's normal. But then Jackie sees that it's not normal. 
So I think that's a, I like that theme coming back, like normalcy punctuated with something supernatural or not normal. And we get that with the ghosts. Yeah. It's been two months since the ghosts began to appear all over the world. At first there was panic, but then it became normal to see them. People are projecting their desires of who they want the ghosts to be. But the doctor tells Jackie that the ghost is not her father. Whatever they are, they're trying to push their way into our world. I thought it was interesting that Jackie's saying, yeah, this happened two months ago and you're not here. You mm-hmm. know, vindicating Harriet Jones, we know, minister. We, we right. know who she is. <laughs> <laughs> saying you're never, you're not going to be here all the time. Yeah. yeah. There are times. No sign of you. Back at the uh, mm-hmm. Christmas you know, invasion. Uh, Christmas invasion, the first episode or mm-hmm. between season episode. It's like, you're not always going to be here, yeah. and we mm-hmm. have to figure out how to handle it ourselves. Mm-hmm. So I just like that Harriet Jones gets vindicated. <laughs> and what she said was correct. Maybe her actions were too far mm-hmm. in shooting down you know, the Sycorax. I also love that this is where the doctor says a footprint is not a boot. It's like one of our first clues that's awesome. And it's also a great line. Yeah. It's just, well, it's, it's a cleverly written line. Yeah. Is that a common saying? It sounds oh, like it should that. be, though. Yeah, <laughs> it's so well written. It should seem to be that. <laughs> But yeah, and it's a great way to describe it because they're like, but they're human. And it's like, well, no, they're a shimmery, humanoid looking thing. You don't know what they are. Can we somehow meme that around and make that a thing? (laughs) (laughs) Footprint is not a boot. Uh, This is also the moment where uh, we see, we do see actors. So we we are seeing the the news broadcasters. So we see Japan and France. Um, But we also see um, there's a talk show where the woman's saying, you know, he's my husband. (laughs) I married my ghost. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a real Trisha. Oh, she's a, actually, that's a real show. Yeah, and that I think I believe it was her real set. And then there's also a shot of um, the woman in the bar yeah. in the pub. That's a very famous actress who's a long time, long time character on their soap opera called EastEnders, oh, okay. which is oh, an I incredibly that, yeah. yeah, it's an incredibly popular show that's yeah. been on forever. Um, so yeah, so they got her to do that, which I'm sure if you were in Britain, you would like. What? Yeah. Totally freak out <laughs> seeing that just laughing your head off. So. Yeah. I love her line though. The only spirits we serve here. <laughs> yeah. So Are, get out. A gin and some gin, whiskey, and vodka. Vodka, I think. Yeah. <laughs> That's very funny. At Torchwood, the woman Yvonne Hartman checks in with Rajesh, a scientist in the lower part of the building. He is monitoring a huge sphere suspended in midair and informs her there is no change. The sphere still does not register on any type of machine. Back upstairs, two Torchwood employees, Gareth and Addie, sneak into a section of the building that is under construction to make out. In this secluded area, they run into a Cyberman. Dun, dun, dun. I'll just say, uh, can I just say like, oh yeah, she would make a horrible companion. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else get that homage that's going on here? Now that some, uh, we've seen the Tomb of the Cybermen. Oh, yeah. Not until later. <laughs> okay. I didn't get it until later in the okay. episode. Because it's all plastic, the plastic. cheating. Yeah. Oh, I didn't get that. Coverings. And then so they rip through it just yeah. like in Tomb of the Cybermen. Well, no. Well, later they, they, later they rip through yes. it. This but, is just the biggest yeah. review. But you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's that, setting it up. Yeah. Yeah. This is the, the, the subtle hint. And then later it's yeah. the direct ripoff. Yeah. So. <laughs> but laying the groundwork now. No. <laughs> um, I like our introduction to Yvonne. Um, mm-hmm. You know, she seems to be, oh, you know, over the top and, you know, incredibly focused. But I do like, you know, she's like, okay, you know, Raj is bored down there, you know. So she asks somebody, send him something nice, you know, mm-hmm. something that will pass the time. So she's not, we're, we're, we're looking at a woman who may be incredibly focused, but is not a tyrant. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, she might a be person. fascist. She might be a fascist. And but, a people person. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't like her. And my, you know, you think you're like, oh, these are the people that are making the ghost appear. And so you're like, oh, that's kind of shady. What's up with that? Oh, this is the woman in charge. Oh, she's bad. Mm. That was my reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To her. she is. She is. But my point is they're still putting in, they're, they're still trying to make her a bit three dimensional, you know, where she is kind of like, you know, when she, when we first see her, she's like, oh, give yourself a round of applause. Yes, I'm rolling my eyes. But because, you know, that's silly and stupid, you know, but it is one of those, hey, let's do those motivation nonsense things. Kind of win over people. Yeah. I mean, she is charismatic, charming, slick. 
none of those yeah, are necessarily her. good or bad, <laughs> but she's no, using it bad. for her own purpose. <laughs> I'm saying they're bad. I don't like her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she is the bad guy, but the, I do kind of like that it's the, they're trying to make her a little bit more interesting than just a one-note mustache twirling villain. I think she's still the bad guy, but she's just, but they made it so that she's not mani- the, mani- manipulative, not mean-spirited. What she's yeah, doing, she, also, she thinks she's doing right. Yes, she is mm-hmm. firmly convinced that she is doing the right thing. It is just very wrong. And she doesn't, but she doesn't care how she gets it done. Right, mm-hmm. right. To her, the ends justify the means. Yes, she is that use, type of person. And everybody else is so beneath her in the way that she sees things. <laughs> These are the helpers. We keep them happy. And everything runs. But, you know, I disagree with that. I don't see her as like these are just the 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 the, the underlings. I mean, she knows about Gareth and and Addie, right? And she doesn't care. I mean, because she's it keeps like she them lets, happy and yeah, content. But that's a good thing. That's she I knows mean, that's Sebastian's name. She goes. That's the way we make this work. Right. We're people pleasers. We're people people. <laughs> so, but so I don't I don't view it as. <laughs> yeah, it's it's probably that unwavering quality that doesn't allow for shades of gray that I. Yeah, there are no shades of gray to her. Got what I said. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I think we see her as too hard-lined for whatever decisions he has to make. But it, it is interesting that Torchwood is a, I'm assuming, a top-secret organization mm-hmm. um, that is dealing with alien technology and breaking barriers between worlds. But yet their fraternization policy, like, she'll so just loose. look the other way. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> these, uh, you know, security analysts, whatever they are, I'll let them go do their private thing. Um, not worried about security or what might happen to them or what <laughs> allowing that relationship to bloom might compromise Torchwood's mission. That's that's just uh, that was a little weird because it should be a little more business business. Yes. Maybe maybe she went but she too doesn't, far. With she doesn't. The people she pleasing. doesn't like it when they're late. Right. When they come back late, she's like, "We'll talk about this later." And I, you know, took her at her word. Yeah, they will talk about it later. But as long as they're not, as long as it's not affecting their job performance, she seems to be okay with mm-hmm. it. And it also gets her in with the other people that she's talking to. See, I'm just one of you. Oh yeah, they think we don't know mm-hmm. about it, and she's getting that friendship with them. Yeah, I, I guess when watching it again this time. Reminded me of like, um, you know, the things that happen with uh, General Petraeus with the Valerie Plain thing. Like, it's always those little things that crack into any security apparatus. And I know that they Torchwood might not be primarily about like intelligence security, but it is a top secret, very clandestine organization. And I think the the Torchwood show gets more into the darker side of it, Way where definitely. this is still. Like, they're probably feeling it out and trying to be lighter because they are going to go a little bit darker. But it was still, I mean, it's just something that, you know, if you were running a security operation. Yeah, but they are two employees within the same organization. They didn't go outside. Yeah. And it is kind of, you know, if you think about it from Yvonne's point of view, this is this top secret beyond the UN secret institution. People can't have lives outside. These are the people that they get to choose from. And as long as it isn't affecting their work. I don't mind if they run off for a snog real quick on their break. <laughs> and because of what they did, did allow but the Cyberman to get yeah. into that crap. Yeah, it is so you're right. The word. It does. It's like, this was a lot more of a breach than you thought it was. Well, well that's kind of funny. I was, I was about to say, well, you're not going to expect to have an e- evil robot that's going to convert people in your construction zone. But oh, wait, this is Torchwood. Yes, you should expect evil <laughs> alien things happening. And that was the other thing. Like the, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I bought the story, but just these are the gaps in the story uh because again they're going down to this construction site like i understand that it's a building that they're trying to play as also a public building i'm sure there's lots of offices but yeah you have 20 armed guards show up at the tardis appearing but the cybermen get a foothold like right underneath of you and there's there's no no like warning alarm, yeah, no warning. Bo- no bells yeah yeah but they had plastic wrap between yes. them yes i did so love the plastic see. wrap <laughs> and i actually i did love the the scene where um addy goes into and discovers the cyberman because it it feels big even though it's very tight like it's mm-hmm. all close-ups on her with plastic but it still feels like uh, a big area though it could have been shot in like a right you know a 20 foot by 20 foot room mm-hmm. but it's still it, it feels ominous and big and it was cool that we get the reveal of the Cyberman. Like, it's that, that the Cyberman doesn't have to keep 
hidden from us because we've met them already. Mm -hmm. So we get the reveal earlier on. And I don't think um, it ruins the surprise later of who the ghosts are. It's just like, oh, man, there's Cybermen Mm -hmm. in the building. We know what's coming and they don't. Yeah, but like it was still a surprise. It's like what? Well, go ahead. Well, I think it helps. It also helps with the pacing, so we're not trying to constantly figure out what it is. Mm-hmm. They're showing us, so good. We know that. Oh, now there's more to come. So I think that helped with the pacing of the whole show. That to me, this episode went mm-hmm. by really quickly. Yeah, I was gonna say something along those lines where we know what it is. So the other two parters keep us guessing, where this one right. doesn't. And it's kind of like that um, Chekhov's gun device thing where you show your hand of what's going to happen and then you have to address it later. Well, see, I thought it was more of a distraction, though, for me to reveal this that the Cyberman is in the building. It doesn't mean that the ghosts are Cybermen. Right. That's right. what... Did, mm-hmm. did you ever get, the, get that when I said that? Like, it was, it was still a surprise mm. for me as a oh, viewer yeah. that the ghosts turn out to be Cybermen. Mm. Because just because I see, see one, one Cyberman in a building... yeah doesn't necessarily mean that right I've, you know i still mm-hmm. i'm still at this point thinking that the ghost thing is a new phenomenon or that the or actually i feel like that that yvonne and torchwood are creating these ghosts mm. or something yeah. yeah right but that they had the cyberman that was that was great that they don't hide that till later yeah, on i'm so glad i'm with you on that when you're right behind the plastic in that entire scene right because we've already met the cyberman mm-hmm. or the cybermen earlier mm-hmm. in this season Gareth and Addie return to their workstations, now wearing two earpods rather than just one as before, and prepare the Torchwood device for the next ghost shift. Jackie and Rose are in the TARDIS while the Doctor is outside setting up a device to triangulate the ghost's point of origin. They have a heart-to-heart about how much Rose has changed and that Jackie is worried about how much more she still could change. When the shift begins, the doctor's device traps one of the ghosts. An alarm sounds at Torchwood that something is interfering with the ghost field. They shut it down, which makes the ghosts disappear and use a CCTV camera to see the TARDIS. The doctor has discovered the point of origin and sends the TARDIS to Torchwood. Yvonne watches the TARDIS disappear and excitedly runs to prepare for the doctor's arrival. This is the first instance we get of Elonzi. (laughs) <laughs> yep. <laughs> Our very first Alonzi. I think this talks back to what you're saying about Rose saying nothing happened for the first 19 years. Mm-hmm. She's still fixated on, I only worked in a shop. Yeah. Yeah. And this is from Rose, who, when she meets other people throughout this whole season, she acknowledges them and what they're doing is valid. Mm-hmm. But for her, it's not good enough. Yeah. You know, so it's like she's almost elevated to almost contradicting you know, in her own mind, being you know closer to the doctor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the doctor says, Ordinary people are great, but we saw in The Impossible Planet, I'm not one of them. <laughs> you know, I don't want to go live on a house somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so she has that same feeling now, and that's what Jackie's talking about. You've changed. That's not good enough for you, even you know, when you're putting it down that she used to work in a shop, and nothing happened for the first 19 years. It's like, she's definitely changed, and where is she going to go with this? I love that scene. Yeah. I love the scene of the two of them in the TARDIS. When even Jackie telling Rose, you're starting to look like the doctor. Right. Rose says, yeah, like, you think I <laughs> As do. a compliment. Yeah, and yeah. Jackie didn't mean it that way. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think this scene is really sad. Yeah. I mean, I just remember watching this scene and being like, really? How many times in the in the series of Doctor Who has there ever been a companion that, like, spent their entire life traveling with the doctor? No. So then, like, why would the doctor, like, let her think that? Like, when he asked her, you know, on that island or on that planet with the dinosaurs, like, how long are you going to travel with me? And she's like, forever. And he's like, sounds great. Right. Like, <laughs> it's so sad that he, like, you know, he yeah. knows that that's not a reality. Yeah. He knows that, like, traveling with him is dangerous. But it seems like yeah. he accepted it now. He's changed yeah. a bit. Where He is open to it. It was maybe not forever, but you can stay as long as you want type of thing rather than yeah. he's not going to end it because it's painful that it's somewhere going to end so we're going to end it now it doesn't yeah. seem like that's happening anymore it's like yeah. no you'll I totally stay as agree. long he's, as you want he's, he's open now to more more and and i i do kind of feel like you know well if something happens in the future they'll cross that bridge 20 or minutes breach. 20 minutes later <laughs> you know literally but mm-hmm. i think now he's like no i'm not going to rest- restrain my 
feelings. It's like, no, I'm going to enjoy this now. But that's the doctor side. Rose still didn't learn from Sarah Jane, <laughs> which she's supposed to have learned. <laughs> no, she didn't. So I, you know, that's what you're saying. It's like, how can Rose yeah. still get that? Yes, the doctor may say it, and it may be true, and you may be yay, but mm -hmm. there's got to be part of you that still knows somewhere down the line this can change. Right, maybe that's what Jackie as a mom is like fearful for her right. daughter. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I totally get Jackie's yeah. motivation. I, and I love her retort to Rose. I used to work in a shop. And it's weird. It's like Rose has grown and matured, but yet certain things she hasn't matured in. You See, have forgotten really... who you are and therefore <laughs> yeah. have forgotten me. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I mean, I because to me, it's the line where she says, there's going to be this woman on some alien planet. Walking and through a market. Nothing, yeah. yeah, walking through a market and nothing of Rose Tyler mm -hmm. will be left. Left. Yeah. That's a that's a very powerful thing for a mm -hmm. mom to say to her daughter because a mom doesn't, you know, you want your kids to grow up and, and, and exceed your own expectations, but you don't want them to completely lose their past. That's interesting you brought that up because that also rem <laughs> reminded me of the Cybermen. <laughs> Because the Cybermen started off as humans, and then they kept replacing parts of themselves with robotics and over and over again. And then Jackie's making the same metaphor with Rose being I so like different. That. Very good. And I was like, Ooh. wow, that's great. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> we'll strike that last part. <laughs> <laughs> it's also interesting, the, 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 this episode so far has been uh, comic, sad, comic, sad like right before the rose and jackie scene you know we've got rose and the doctor singing ghostbusters yeah who are you gonna call <laughs> who are you gonna call you know and and they're just like being silly i mean he's like he's actually strutting really mm -hmm. silly as he goes out of the tardis mm -hmm. and then he sets everything up and then you know you've got jackie saying you know what's wrong with you you know if our loved ones come back accept it and he's like i think it would be horrific and it's like i kind of agree with the doctor but mm -hmm. We are. I mean, it's like we're so overpopulated on the planet now. Could you imagine all the dead population coming back? Oh, wait a that minute. That sounds like an episode further down, maybe with another doctor or two, three down the road. <laughs> no, I think I think that's a I think that's a case for Torchwood. Yes, um, that too. <laughs> but it's it's there's a lot of tone shifts, and I yeah. Well, even so they, for the most part, they all work. Well, even what you're saying when they when he traps or triangulates the ghost and you're like, oh, the ghost looks like it's being hurt. And yeah. then all of a sudden it swipes at the doctor and you're like, oh, we're in a different tone again. Right. But it still works. Where... Yeah, but the doctor is still also kind of like, ah, ha, 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 now I got you. Yeah. Just a little bit of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, when you start with such a somber, cold open that foreshadows your main character's mm -hmm. death, you've got to interject some silliness into this episode. Otherwise, we're watching it the whole time. As when one note, happen, yeah. yeah. When Jackie says to the doctor when he's setting up the trap to trap one of the ghosts, why are you always reducing it to science? Can't you just let it be true? You're talking about her beliefs and her faith. And that's such a key point to me about so much of almost all these episodes of Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. It's like you can believe something, but let's find out if that's something you believe is true. And so he does that through science. Yeah. You know, that she's like, no, don't give that up. Don't try and disprove what I think. <laughs> you, you always come in and ruin it. Right. Kind of a thing. I also like that there's a quick little Gelth reference here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you From think the, it could be the Gelth? And again, it's no. It's no not, not nice, nice try. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks just for a, Just a little reference all the way back to the beginning of the Rose Doctor relationship. Mm -hmm. And the Doctor puts on the old fashioned 3D paper glasses. Yeah. Which. Why does he do that? It's like, this is weird, but no, it's not explained until the next episode. Yeah, no explanation. Nobody <laughs> just even... throughout this whole episode, he starts putting them on in different places, and what is he doing? And nobody says to him, what are you, what are you doing? I really like the props. Mm -hmm. I think this is a very prop-heavy episode. But I like the, that backpack. That the cool. backpack and mm -hmm. the ghost catching with doodad with the lights and the dials and cables. And it, little cone yeah, ivy looking things. I don't know how Jackie got up there, but I love that Jackie's just <laughs> sitting up there. <laughs> that is a great reveal. If I have been on Mars, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I also love how they edit it because yeah. it's yeah. really wide and it says, if we end up on Mars and then cut a little bit closer, it's not like they go to a close up, just a little bit closer, just, just to give it a little oomph. I'm going to kill you. I mean, it's very, with, with very her, funny. With her feet dangling. Yeah. Just, yeah. We can still see the dangling. <laughs> it's just great. I love it. 
Oh, but back to uh, what Alvin was saying about the props of the ghost busting thing. It's it's interesting how that almost looks like it belongs in the TARDIS. It's got that coral quality hive mm-hmm. looking thing. And then you think Ghostbusters because that's what they're doing. But then the gun isn't actually a gun. It's like charging up the different cones. And I like that again. It just goes to show you that the doctor is not like violent. Like he would use a gun. He's not American. Right. <laughs> When the TARDIS materializes inside Torchwood, it is immediately surrounded by a military squad with guns raised. Yvonne shows up, and they all applaud the Doctor. She seems to know all about him and asks about his companion. He pulls Jackie out of the TARDIS and introduces her as Rose. Yvonne shows them around and tells them that Torchwood's motto is, If it's alien, it's ours. They confiscate any alien tech found or captured on Earth and use it for the good of the British Empire. The Doctor is their prisoner, and the TARDIS now belongs to Torchwood. Upstairs... Addie leads another co-worker, Matt, to the construction zone to be converted by the Cybermen. Did nobody see the crack in the door of the TARDIS when it was being wheeled away? It was so large. <laughs> when no, Rose peers out. Oh, how big she opens uh, she, the door. Like you, yeah. you can see her. Come on, yeah, guys. Yeah, it is totally like, yeah. What are these guys trained to do? <laughs> I, was one, I, I was always wondered that they see the TARDIS disappear and they know it's coming to Torchwood. Mm-hmm. But they seem to know exactly the point where it's going to appear within the building. I mean, they run immediately to the correct floor. Before it materializes. Yeah, yeah, before it materializes, mm-hmm. the correct room, everything. So it's like, how are you able to do that? I mean, that's really advanced technology. I mean, I, I mean, really, <laughs> really it is in the, we need the script to move the story along. I mean, you yes, know, of course. For him, but, you know, it's like, okay. Yvonne had a troop on each level. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they just had to run in from out the hallway, you know, from outside the hallway. And there was a life model decoy of each Yvonne on each floor. <laughs> no, well, she wasn't there. She took her a while to get in. It was like all the military was there first because then they had the scene, Rose saying, yeah. they have guns. You can't go mm-hmm. out there. Oh, yeah, you're right. And cut, the... <laughs> cut scene. There's one guy be like, no, no TARDIS here, but um, there is uh, some metal robot looking thing <laughs> in the construction zone they're like stay on target <laughs> oh, the doctor responds to Rose in that saying my bad impersonation they can shoot me dead but the moil high ground is mine reminds me so much of this actor Richard Hayden who was a radio personality then he went on to TV and Dick Van Dyke I remember seeing him when I was younger um, he was the voice of the Caterpillar in Alice in Wonderland. Most oh. people, I think, would re- recognize him. <laughs> exactly. Most people would recognize him as Uncle Max in Sound of Music. Mm. <gasps> the Von Trapp oh. family singers. So okay. here's his picture. Uh-huh. But sorry, <laughs> nobody out there can hear it. See him. We haven't um, got a video yet, Frank. Ever since an you know, the 50s on his radio shows when he um, did impersonations of fish, over the radio, which that just shows the kind of humor he had. It was just out there bizarre. But he over enunciated and had that nasal tone. So I want to know if David Tennant or Russell are listening. And do you remember 10 years ago, was this a Richard Hayden joke? Did you get it from that? Because huh. I just want to know, because it just when he said it, it stuck made out. me think, you know, this actor. Yeah. I also wanted to point out, this is, you know, we're getting a little bit more of a Yvonne uh, characterization here when she's showing them around Torchwood. Um, she's supremely confident. You know, this is where she's, you know, her arrogance is coming through. Um, but the one line that always makes me laugh is when she's talking about uh, the, the Magnum clamps and it can hold up two tons. Mm-hmm. And that's an imperial ton. Torchwood did not go metric. <laughs> and it, that's like, it's a great line and, you know, reminds me of us because, you know, apparently, you know, the metric system is from Satan. You know, Even so America is not going to convert over yeah, to it. Benjamin Franklin tried to get us to convert look we're still here yeah because you know so that's weird. how we are uh going back a little earlier than that even uh as uh the doctor leaves the tardis and yvonne has her rounds of applause for the for the doctor <laughs> and for the tardis Thank i you. yes I, I i really love david Tennant in this moment he goes from <laughs> so many emotions <laughs> yes, he does. like he walks out into this group of armed guards with hands raised with, with hands raised yeah high ground moral high ground yes <laughs> and, but by the end of it, he's just eating up all the applause. He's oh, like, oh, yes, you. it is very nice, the TARDIS, yes. And like, then at one point, he's like, stop, so you can stop now. Yeah. <laughs> that look of disdain that he has when she says, we know everything about you, you always tell with the companion. The look that he gives her and then instantly changes 
to, oh, yes, here, and grabs Jackie out. This is Rose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but that well look done. that he gives her right at the beginning is just I mean, ev- chilling to the Every beat is a different emotion right. from him. I, I, it's just great. I, I should say. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> and then Jackie, it's an it's amount of miles, not years or something, or backwards? Always constantly putting her down. Or, or being yeah. older. She, she fell into the heart of the TARDIS and aged 57 that's years. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a throwback to right, yeah, it's yeah. the age of Cybermen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, like maybe we should walk slow because her ankle's bad. <laughs> and then I'll, she says, "I'll show you where I'll put my ankle." <laughs> it's just some great, like again, yeah. things right there. I love it. It's also the beginning of a bit where we get the Doctor and Jackie. Yeah, with no Rose. Mm-hmm. I don't think we've ever had that before. Mm-mm. You know, maybe you know quickly. Oh, there's a man in my bedroom from the pilot. But now we get this really good interaction and chemistry between the two of them, and it's a lot of fun to watch. And what would it be like if Jackie was a companion? <laughs> oh, it wouldn't last long. <laughs> but it would be great to watch. And just wondering, you know, would he elevate her like he does everybody else? And But she wouldn't have that romantic part with him. She would just give him back everything that he gets. So I think it could be a really good, hmm. interesting relationship to watch. And is that Rose in 30 years? I, I mean, I just thought about it <laughs> off of your Don't comment. Don't you mean 20 years? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yvonne takes them to see the sphere. Along the way, she explains that Queen Victoria set up the Torchwood Institute after the incident with the werewolf to keep Britain great and keep out the alien horde. In the sphere room, Jackie asks what's wrong with it, and Yvonne responds that it just gives everyone the feeling that they want to run and hide. Raj tells them that it doesn't register on any scans, no heat, no mass, and emits no radiation. The doctor looks at it through paper 3D glasses and says it is a void ship. It comes from the nothingness between universes. He asks how the sphere appeared and Yvonne tells him it arrived just before the ghosts began to appear. I actually am very proud of Jackie in these scenes. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. she doesn't miss a beat. She goes along. She gets that. Having Rose stay in the TARDIS is best. best, The best, yeah. You know, not only does it keep her daughter hopefully more protected, but Mm -hmm. she is, she will know what to do. Like, if Jackie was in the TARDIS, she wouldn't know what to do. It, It shows us, like, where rose comes from like this is her mom they're Mm -hmm. they're very similar um jackie's a good stand-in for rose yeah 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 absolutely i imagine if the doctor pulled rose instead jackie would still be dangling at the top of the the rafters (laughs) i'm gonna kill you (laughs) i do also like how the you say you know jackie is okay with rose being the tars so's the doctor you know when, when rose um slightly peeks through the completely open doors um as the tardis goes by he just kind of gives a look like yeah everything's going to be fine you know like she's going to take care of it you know whatever happens to me i know she's going to be solving the problems yeah i was actually a little upset at her when she left the tardis Why? Mm. because i think that she would have been able to do more inside the tardis i mean i get why she had to leave for the story but mm-hmm. In the moment, I was like upset Stay. at her yeah. for not staying. In yeah, the it's TARDIS. like that horror movie thing. Don't go upstairs. Yeah, there's no exactly. exit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave the TARDIS. You're safe inside the TARDIS. <laughs> then the Doctor and Yvonne, you're never gonna get in the TARDIS. Oh yeah, whatever. We've done this before, <laughs> <Yeah>. etc. <laughs> right. It just, I think that irked him a little bit more going no you're not <laughs> you, mm-hmm. you know you really don't know as much as you think you do and i don't want to get into a, a big conversation about this but this is where the the moment in the episode where we get the saying the actual lines they're doing this so they're keeping britain great mm-hmm. and fighting the alien horde <sighs> fascist <laughs> Okay, I'm done. And for the British Empire. There's no British Empire. Not yeah. Yet. Not yet. <laughs> Which is a good line, but they always want to be like, there was and there will be again. I wanted, you know, just a little, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, you guys had a gigantic empire and it fell apart. And here we get reintroduced to the Void, because uh, this is first mentioned in the Rise of the Cybermen episode. That's how the Doctor explains where they went to a parallel world. Like, we travel through this to get here and it's great that that's coming back in this episode i also like how that when you're looking at the sphere yeah it's cgi Mm -hmm. but the sphere slightly moves it's moving just a little bit like it's hovering just a little bit and it took me a long time because watching it on the tv i'm like it looks creepy Mm -hmm. i mean how do they make the sphere look creepy and it is, I think, just because it is slightly moving just a little bit, not enough to be noticeable. But I actually, like, whenever I watch the episode now, I'm actually looking at the edge of the sphere and the wall to go, yeah, it really is moving over a bit. <laughs> I, I like the the room that the sphere was in. Um, 
of course, knowing how this ends, but the the pillars, the color scheme, the background plating um, right behind the sphere, all is very reminiscent of the Daleks. Mm-hmm. Like uh, the pillars have like a light on them that is round. I mean, it might be the art direction for the entire series being kind of similar. Because then when I was looking for it, I noticed in the TARDIS, it also had kind of similar colors. But on watching this time... The first time I saw the the wide shot of the sphere room, I think when the doctor walks in, um, it definitely gave me like like uh, the same kind of vibes as uh, like when Clara was in the Dalek much later. Mm-hmm. But that same kind of feeling like not quite, but we are similar in that same design universe mm-hmm. they're definitely, definitely hitting at it mm-hmm. i haven't noticed that i'll have to look, check the next time i watch and i like the, how you know we're given all of this information exposition wise about how this is bad this is this is really really bad and then they walk away the doctor goes the wrong direction you're like no doctor other and then he just goes the other way <laughs> yeah. like, not even skipping a beat yeah <laughs> you have to end the scene on a, on a joke yeah rose exits the tardis to the dismay of kelsey <laughs> and follows a scientist to the sphere room Rajesh questions her and asks for her ID. She hands him the psychic paper, but Torchwood employees are trained to recognize it. He orders the room sealed and tells the first scientist to verify the lockdown. The scientist turns around and Rose sees it is really Mickey. And now it's a scientist she followed all the way down. Oh, is it? Yeah, I didn't know that either. I didn't Mm -hmm. notice that. And it's funny because the next time you watch it, Uh knowing this, and you see him in the hallway, it's like, of course that's Mickey because he's totally walking like Mickey. Yeah. The little hunchy shoulder lead thing you know it's like he's walking like mickey but i never noticed until he said it yesterday because even the commentary they call it out look at that guy's walk just notice there's walk and then, <laughs> yeah that's a, yeah because he he's talking about his own walk look at how well that <laughs> actor is walking i don't know who that is but <laughs> and as uh, she leaves the tardis in the right next to the tardis in the warehouse there is a giant uh mummy sarcophagus case which uh plays prominently in a fourth doctor episode called pyramids of mars so that's a very famous iconic uh bit of uh doctor who history i want to know if mickey led rose down there did he know did he see her looking around was he going down there because like she did they mentioned that their doctor was down there so is he trying to meet up with the doctor i was wondering why he went to the spear room what was going on not the spear room the spear room (laughs) we had a gun hidden there so i mean was that where he usually worked it just seemed you know that little convenient of there he goes and she's gonna follow that no i do think it is his post but because he you know he wasn't surprised that rose was there that we saw so i'm wondering just did he lead her down there did she follow him I don't think she really knew that it was him until he turned right. around. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think she knew it was him. She was just drawn to him. His walk. Yes. <laughs> Yvonne takes them to the control room and shows them the blank wall where the sphere first came through. When they aim their particle engines at it, the breach opens and allow the ghosts passage. The breach was emitting signs for years, so they built Torchwood Tower as a way to reach it and use it as a power source. The doctor explains the danger of the shifts and orders Yvonne to cancel the next one, which she eventually does. Addy, Gareth, and Matt wait for everyone to leave the room and activate the shift themselves. There was one scene, I can't remember, it's up to this point, but I can't remember if it was right now or a little bit beforehand, where the, when they returned and they were already having the two ear pots, but in the background are just three extras, yeah. all yeah. the sunglasses. And mm-hmm. it's like, yes, we're spies. Aren't you a spy? I'm a spy. Just the way they were looking. <laughs> they're they're standing around each other. Just, yeah, yeah really very funny. X-Files in the background. It's a uh, Torchwood's internal affairs division. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're being audited. And I I do... thought they thought the ghosts were just some kind of side effect of, you know, not even yeah. really mattering or caring what those ghosts were. It's right. like, oh, what we really want is the power that the this going to produce. Yeah. yeah, so here is where we learn that Torchwood isn't crazy creating the ghost as i thought at the right. beginning of the episode but they it's just something that happens when they shoot the the particle mm-hmm. particle rays at the wall which makes it worse because it's like oh you're just like um poking you're, a hornet's nest almost yeah exactly at this point i wanted a, just a little more explanation how are you going to harness energy from this breach i mean they, they say it but i just wanted a little more that's all 
Well, that I think was going back to the beginning where she said how much power they got from this mm-hmm. ghost ship. Yeah, but how? Or how much they you know what I mean? To, yeah, they don't yeah. know exactly how to harness it yet. That's yeah. why they're there. Mm-hmm. We want to figure out how to harness this. But it went up to 5,000 megawatts or whatever yeah. she had said. So it's like there's power there. We can get it. And also, that's showing that she doesn't care what the side effect the ghosts are. Also coming from the, the experience of being in Torchwood, it seems this is their pattern all along, which is do something, get something, and then figure out how to get that thing to work. So I think they're right. just, oh, look, there's power. Boom. We'll get this power. Oh, look, there's side effects of the ghosts. Well, they're harmless now. If that changes in the future, Torchwood is so supremely arrogant, they'll handle it and then turn around and use it to their advantage. But are they supposed to be scientists or just people who are alien hunting because if they are scientists, they're really bad scientists for not wanting to oh, research yeah. mm-hmm. everything else that's around them. Oh, yeah. They're not the best scientists in the world. Yeah. And who are you? Hi, this is Arlene. Yeah. Oh. Are, are you been there the whole time, Arlene? <laughs> <laughs> Use oh. a time turner to get I, here? I'm here. <laughs> there was a breach. <laughs> <laughs> and there she is. <laughs> They think they're scientists. Yeah, yeah, but they're work. They're operating like a corporation. Just because Mickey wears a lab like coat doesn't military. mean it's a scientist. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 investigating things that they want to use, repurpose, and and yeah, yeah. They're exploit. not. They're in it for discovery. They're in it for exploitation. Mm-hmm. Sounds so wrong when you're mm-hmm. using that much energy, like without yeah. someone who actually knows what they're doing. Yeah, I do think it was a really clever idea for Russell that there was this anomaly hanging, you know, 400 feet above sea level. Mm -hmm. And the idea that the people had was, well, to get to it, we'll build a building around it. I thought that was a really great, clever idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they built a tower around it. And then what was even... Little de- <laughs> <laughs> details, details. No. no, I think it was eight hundred feet. It was the, it was the largest. Can we tower. keep going? <laughs> but what? Well, and then the other cool thing is that they actually have Jackie say that this is Canary Wharf, which in yeah, I didn't get that. What's in that? in two thousand six, that is a real uh, new business area of East London. So East London? Yeah, East London. Uh, so they, it, it, it was all new. Um, the buildings had just started to open around the time that this episode aired. And the tallest building there is called One Canada Place. And Torchwood Tower is One Canada Place. Whoa. And, um, you know, because you, you, you see the actual, like, there's a helicopter shot yeah. looking at the buildings. And, I and that is one. literally, so it it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, Nakatomi Plaza and Die Hard is really the people who should not be maimed, but <laughs> the Fox Plaza, it's 20th Century Fox's corporate building, is Nakatomi Plaza. So I think Russell just had fun with it. And I'm sure the, the people who own Canary Wharf enjoyed it, you know. Because it's used again, so it's like free advertisement for them. Yeah. Well, the aerial shot's not from Doctor Who. It's from the British opening credits of Their Apprentice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a stolen shot. But, you know, I kind of like it because, I mean, it really doesn't have to be there. But they actually have Jackie stand over by the window. Yeah. But I like how they just did a little dose of reality, just yeah. a little bit like you can kind of look at it and go, oh, there's that building. That's really Torchwood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I love it when they do things yeah, like that. Yeah, me too. I don't understand why they built a wall where the breach opens. Why not leave it as empty space? You built the room around it. Why are you putting a wall there? <laughs> was the wall on the breach? Or They're was building that the whole... No, it seemed like that's where, where the wall... Where it appears the that the breach opened. Because they have to shoot those particle cannons at something... Maybe that's just where... Again, I just wanted more explanation from this whole setup. (laughs) (laughs) I I also wanted to uh, mention, since uh, we did make a big deal out of it in the very first episode, there is glass breaking. Yes. I have that down. Okay. It's my my, uh, blue light. (laughs) <laughs> and and also when the doctor says to yvonne cancel the shifts her retort reminded me of something arlene said earlier not this episode but earlier <laughs> in our lives <laughs> uh, she says uh, the doctor lording us assuming alien authority over rights of of man you're going on with the savior complex of the doctor He's actually right in this instance. (laughs) He is, but I can see why they would say that, because he says he's like the ultimate authority over Mm -hmm. things, so... But again, it's just from what you were saying, and then here's the counter where Mm -hmm. it actually is correct what he's saying. So I just think that that's worth pointing out. (laughs) And I also like how she delivers that to him. I also like that we see limitations on psychic paper. Mm Mm-hmm. 
this is so, the first time we've I think seen this is the first time we've seen limitations. So she shows the paper to Rajesh and he's just like, yeah, it's psychic paper. That's funny. Um, so it doesn't work on people who have been trained to identify it. And yet psychic paper works on computers. Yeah, because that's how she got in. Yeah. She puts the psychic paper up against a scanner and it reads that it's an ID on a computer. So I thought that was an interesting little <laughs> doesn't work on people, but computers it's fine with. So she had to go to the computer. I should belong here and then swiped it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and again, uh, they are trained against psychic paper, but not against realizing, oh, this person now has two earbuds and is acting very strange. But the earbuds are so small and subtle. I mean, yeah. you really just can't. Yeah, oh, really super small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and most of the time you're looking at the profile when yeah. she's walking up and down the corridor. She just switched <laughs> so, it. She got tired. Just saying, for a spy organization, <laughs> they should be a little more aware of what's happening. And and since Raj was able to notice psychic paper, so he's seen psychic paper before, right? But, They've all been low-level psychic so it makes training. Me, yeah, it makes me wonder who else has used it. Well, since they said the doctor is number one enemy of Torchwood. Mm. This is something he would use, you know, because they've had all this time. It's not just from the werewolf, but through all the time sure. he worked at UNIT. So they know about the doctor from then. Auburn said low level psychic training. I just saw it as that I can read. Mm. I can tell that. I can tell there's nothing there. Yeah. yeah. You can tell there's something weird yeah. about this. Yeah. I kind of see it. Did, that he, could, did, did he, did Raj say this is psychic paper that doesn't work on me? Or no, he just he says say, it's blank. Yeah. So it was more like that. Hmm. Like I can tell this is blank because I've had low level psychic training. Hmm. Yeah. I, I guess I'm just thinking of the point of I've been trained for this specific thing and then it happens in real life i would have been more like oh this this, this that training is actually useful yeah <laughs> like, but i don't take it as they Click. were trained against i've been trained people. for this yeah yeah, yeah. They were, they were... <laughs> yeah like that fake <laughs> imposter right page 47 were... paragraph two i know i read this <laughs> it's always page 47 <laughs> Rajesh calls Yvonne about Rose, and the doctor reveals the truth about Jackie. Yvonne hears the particle machines activate and tries to stop them, but it is too late. The doctor destroys the ear pods in Addie's ears, and all three of the converted drop dead. Yvonne pulls off one of Addie's ear pods and sees the long tendrils that have been controlling her. Ew. When the Yvonne pulled that ear pod, Freema was still, the actress who plays Addie was still there, so all that goop dripped all over Freema's head. Ew. <laughs> That's in the commentary. Now, I know they have these sparks in like the drill or cutting uh, utensil mm -hmm. <laughs> and the sparks flying. And it's like, how does that actually get into the head if you're going to do that? So that's one thing that always bugged me when the Cybermen are like converting people that you hear the and you see the sparks going. Well, actually, didn't you say last night that's them cutting their heads off, <laughs> taking their brains out, putting it into a Cyberman and then and sealing it, then stuffing their stuff in and resealing the head. No, that's not what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> right, but they're doing that for Addy, for Matt. That same thing happens for them. Yeah, and we hear the little, yeah. little, uh, Z Z Z yeah, drill. So, I yeah. mean, it's a fun, Soft. great effect that's very strong, but not practical. No. Well, that's what, it, yeah, it was like, well, they're just cutting off part of the scalp, removing the brain, sticking the stuff in, and then <laughs> attaching it right back up. <laughs> Or the noise was a red herring. So that you don't hear the screams because they're doing construction. Wait, that's it. It's, it's actually construction. the construction. Or, or it's not that at all. Yeah, it's a cover. It's just uh, can sounds. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. So many of the doctor's theories in this episode are wrong because yeah. he doesn't know what's going on. And since he doesn't have his normal companion next to him, he's just, people are asking him things. So he's coming up with ideas and theories rather than actual truth, saying that, well, the, whoever is coming through shot the sphere first, like a cannonball to break through. That's not what happened at all. <laughs> and so I just found that it's interesting. A lot of the things he was going through this whole mm -hmm. episode, trying to figure out and coming up with ideas and theories, they're just wrong. Right? I just thought he's it was interesting because everyone goes to the doctor approach. to find out what's really happening. Mm -hmm. And so when they go to the doctor, yeah. he's telling him something okay <laughs> you know it's a theory but that he doesn't he doesn't know what's happening I just thought that was great yeah and that always as jackie said earlier that really pisses him off when he doesn't know what's happening <laughs> <laughs> i find it funny now that he's pissed off where in the same pit he's fascinated right so, so it's interesting that the same thing is sort of happening but yet two different oh, reactions this is earth the sphere has begun thumping loudly and now registers on all monitoring devices weight mass and elect electromagnetic fields. The sphere is active. Mickey tells Rose not to worry. They beat them before, they'll beat them again. The Cybermen escape from the alternate Earth, and Mickey followed to stop them here. Mickey Smith, defending the Earth. <laughs> I love Mickey here. I love Mickey. It's good to have him back. 
And yes. how? And, he's, and how? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's happy to see Rose, but he's also he's focused on his mission. Yeah. Yeah. There's no romantic, you know. It's like, oh yeah, it's good to see you. Let me get my gun so I can shoot this. You know, it, it's like you can tell Mickey has moved on, and not yeah. metaphorically. Or yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I knew. Let me get my gun. <laughs> Well, she, I mean, uh, Billy Piper definitely played it, you know, Mickey before was always kind of meek, kind of, uh, you know, he might've been smart and, but, but he was always in the background and here he has taken charge and Rose has no eyes, but for Mickey during this whole section, you know, where he, she missed him. And like, uh, Brian was saying, he says, oh yeah, it's good to see you too. But he's not even looking at her when he says that. Mm -hmm. But Rose is just enamored with this new Mickey that is take charge. I don't know if I see that. Oh, I see. You, it. you I, were seen too it. busy looking at Mickey. Like I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll I, give you that. Was Rose even in that scene? <laughs> <laughs> I don't was, remember. It's Rose that yeah. you speak of. <laughs> Just like Arlene, where did you come from? <laughs> I, th- I think back to like World War Three, where Mickey's going to be controlling the missile and he's still like, somebody tell me to do it or somebody tell me not to do it. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he's like, I don't I don't want it. And here he's just like, yeah, I got a gun. I'm going to use it. I'm going to blow him away. You know, he's he, his life experience has changed him and he's a much, much stronger character. I agree. And also, she never thought, never ever would see him again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think that's part of it is, oh my gosh, you're back. Yay. And look at you. You've changed so much. You've grown so much. And so you I don't, don't see stink. it as a romantic thing. I see more as just... <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, not necessarily romantic, but just... Impressed. And impressed, okay. yeah. Imp- like, impressed, it, yes. It okay. could be romantic if there was any way that they were going to be spending more time together. But not yet. But definitely like that initial like, whoa. You know, the first time you see, I don't know, an ex and they are not not in the gutter but they are driving around in like a new mercedes and everything's going their way and look at their beautiful family it's that kind of thing where it's like whoa that wasn't what i was expecting he's no longer the tin dog right Mm -hmm. he's the man in havana no i guess not (laughs) (laughs) the doctor and yvonne follow the signal that was controlling the ear pods down to the construction area and are captured by the cybermen they are brought back to the control room where the cybermen kill the background extras so we won't have to pay them the next episode (laughs) they also increase the ghost shift to 100%. An army of ghosts begin to appear in larger numbers than ever before. They fully materialize through the breach and Yvonne realizes that it's an invasion. The doctor solemnly says, it's not an invasion. It's too late for that. It's a victory. Here's where we get the full homage to Tomb of the Cybermen with them ripping uh, through the... Yeah. yeah they, I yeah, love it. Slicing through the... Plastic. Saran wrap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, viewers. Is hinting at an episode to be posted real soon. <laughs> The doctor asks the cyber leader how they were able to build a void ship and the cyberman replies that the sphere is not theirs. It broke into this universe and they followed. The sphere opens and from it comes Daleks. What? <laughs> Again, everybody's impressions of this episode are wrong. You know, we you know, we don't know what's in the sphere. We're assuming it's Cybermen. We're, we're assuming it has something to do with the Cybermen. You know, we assume that the ghosts were the Cybermen. And so then Unless all of a sudden... Co- paid attention to the coloring, like Halburn said. Yeah. Yeah. They gave us that hint, but... Yeah, the sphere is very Dalek colored. <laughs> I'm always surprised when the Cybermen show up. Like, <laughs> always. I, I just go on record as saying that. I, I never suspect it's them. And I don't know why. Don't look behind you. So I'm what you're saying you. is <laughs> you always are surprised watching Doctor Who because they always show up. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And maybe that's why I'm never expecting them to be them like, again. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody expects the Dalek invasion. <laughs> Um, there's something other than the, the Tomb of the Cybermen homage, if you will. The concept of the Cyber King mentioned by Mickey will eventually come about in the next Doctor. So keep that in mind. The next Doctor special, uh, okay. where the Doctor was without a companion, they have a Cyber King. The Cybermen and the Daleks being together, they were previously in classic series. They appeared together in The Wheel in Space, The War Games, The Mind of Evil, Legopolis, The Five Doctor Special, and this current series uh, episode, Dalek. But this is the first time that both the Cybermen and a Dalek or the Daleks play a major role. When people were watching this, they were thinking, oh yeah, we've seen the Cybermen and the Daleks face off before. This is actually the first time it had, because yeah, I think never ev- happened before. everybody just played, you know, pretend that they did, you know, with toys or in the playground. And then when it finally happened in the series, they're like, we've seen this before. Yeah, oh, no, somebody, no, we haven't. Yeah. Somebody in the, the confidential for this episode says, yeah, yeah in the schoolyard, you always played <laughs> yeah. Cybermen versus Daleks. But not on TV. But it never happened on TV. 
So that's another reason why this uh, episode was so special. Special. Aww. The timing of the Cybermen crossing over, I thought, was really odd. And they kind of just left it as, yeah, the Doctor would say something like that to kind of understand what was going on. But they're saying five million Cybermen kept me in three years to travel through the void because of the size of them. But there's no space or time or mass in the void. And so it's the breach that's that or it's just sort of an odd timing for them to do it. Yeah. And when did the advance guard? I think this is this is more of a discussion for the next episode. So who is this episode good for? A new viewer, a casual viewer, a fan of the show, or a diehard? Uh, well, I might say something that might be a little controversial, but this is how I feel. Um, I think this is good for everybody. I love this episode. I think this episode is a lot of fun. And I know it's the culmination of a series, maybe even two series. Um, but this is very, very Doctor Who. I love it. And I'd show it to anybody. And that's my story. And I'm going to stick to it. <laughs> Brian, I'm about to blow your mind because I agree with you 100%. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Thinking about this, I was like, who, what category would I put this in? And I have to put it in the everyone category. It's I, I would show this to someone who had never seen this version of Doctor Who before. They'll figure out what's going on. Yeah, I think there's enough. Yeah, I, I agree. I can't, I can't add anything to what you just said. I agree with you. Um, this is good for everyone. Um, this is Auburn, and I, I, I will agree with both of you. Uh, I'll put this in the everyone because it is it is solid. We do get a little bit of the cold open. Uh, we get Rose's backstory very briefly, but enough to know who the Rose character is. Um, there's not a lot of uh, like weird stuff that that you know would put somebody off. It's all pretty straightforward, all on Earth. Uh, you get comedy and you get emotions, and yeah, I think it's a good episode. And I think uh, I would be comfortable showing it to somebody who had no. Doctor Who experience. I agree a lot with what you guys are saying, <laughs> but I would not put it in that category. I think it would rob the people from experiencing a lot of it, that they don't have the history or the relationship of who Mickey is. You don't understand him coming back when he's supposed to never be there. You don't get that feeling. You don't understand the past between the doctor and Jackie. It's like when she's kissing him, it's just funny, but you don't get the transition of how much that has changed, how much that has grown. I think there's so much in this that would just be robbed from somebody seeing it for the first time and not knowing the history of who any of these characters are. I think they'd like it. I think it'd be okay. But I think there's so much more to it. It can be appreciated by at least a casual viewer who has some familiarity with who the Cybermen are, what the Pepper Pots are, because all they're going to see is, <laughs> okay, so what are these things coming out of it? They would not have that fear of the Daleks are now here. You know, they would not get that suspense at the end. So I think at least a casual viewer, but I do think this is a great episode. You know, this is the two-parter is just fabulous. It's great. I love it. It's one of my favorites. But I wouldn't want to start somebody on it because I feel that would it might get them in, into it but I think it would rob them of so much other build up to this episode do you think though that it would entice them to go do more to see more it might more? but it's like telling people who Rosebud is before you know so you'd see them you'd see the whole movie you know differently Citizen Kane you'd see differently knowing what Rosebud is at the end you'd look at it differently we, we've all seen episodes and we go back and watch it and we pick up new things so I think that whole experience would be gone but I also think that the the new the the first category when we talk about a new viewer they they're different from a casual viewer in the fact that they may never watch another episode. But if they are going to watch it again... But they then are, they're they a casual them, viewer. No, but if <laughs> this, is the first time this is the first one they see, there's so much to it that I think that they will miss. This goes back right. way back when Terminator 2 was coming out. And I did not watch any of the promos anywhere. The day before it actually comes out in the theaters, there was one commercial that was just on and passing, and it gave it away. It gave everything away. And I just felt... I was robbed of that feeling in the theater to go, oh my gosh, the Terminator is back. What do you mean he's on the good side? Spoiler. What does he mean he's on the good side? <laughs> I just said that before. <laughs> but that's what the whole thing that bugs me. That's the whole idea. But, you know, that if you get just somebody who hasn't done it and trying to get him into watching Doctor Who, I think there are other episodes that will do that and entice them and show some good aspects of it that don't give away two years of buildup, that don't give away an entire season of who and what Torchwood is in the build-up. So, first of all, I kind of felt the way Frank did, but as someone who started watching this as a casual viewer and who's 
also never seen the Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> any of the episodes, any of the movies. Um, but you kind of already know what's going to happen with the Terminator because it came out when I was a child. So the same Ouch. way, a lot of people have never watched Doctor Who, but if they've heard of it and they already kind of know what's going to happen, then they're, are, these series are old. You think about it. My Some of the students that I have were maybe in first grade when this came out. <laughs> so um, these, this series is old. And they kind of know, so it doesn't matter if it's a spoiler or not. I think it's good for everyone. I think it's for the new viewer. I agree with you, Brian. <laughs> Yay, I'm happy. And also, Mickey looks hot in this episode, so <laughs> it kind of boosts it up a little bit. He's wearing, like, workout breathable attire. <laughs> it's just the weirdest thing. That yeah, it's like it's Under Armour. And, and, and yeah. like, is it a turtleneckish kind Cause of Because he adds the turtleneck later. It's, and then yeah. he has vents for his armpits, like he's working out. It's weird. But then again, you know, he's been living on a planet that likes Zeppelins, so they have a different fashion sense. Maybe they use that from old Zeppelin balloon material. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> we went for pants and they went for the top. Yeah. <laughs> it turns into a parachute at the end. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so hard for me right now. Because I agree with everybody... And everything they've said, but... But it's diehards only. <laughs> <laughs> you just listened to an episode of... <laughs> I don't know, because I never knew... I mean, what, what Kelsey said about... And Arlene said about this show being older, and you would know what, like, the Dalek and the Cybermen are, because they've been around for so long. I didn't know when I was watching this, and I remember when I first got into Doctor Who... They were on the sci-fi channel, and I think this episode came up because I texted Brian. I was like, this episode is, this is what's happening on this episode. Should I watch this? And he says, no, don't watch that episode. <laughs> well, because you were already committed yeah. to and so that, watching every single right. episode at that point. It's yeah, yeah. like, yes, do it in order. You're already hooked. Yeah, but I also agree with Frank, and, and like, this is a buildup, and I want somebody to watch these episodes with all of that coming at them and hitting them the way it should hit them and it's intended to hit them the right way uh, i'm just gonna have to go with a casual but i am leaning toward new and casual but i'll stick with casual so 1.5 viewer <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh what the, I, what I, we're saying is it's it, not bad to show no, it to no, somebody it's new not, not and that we all really like this episode but it's we personal just, preference it's just preference of if you are going to continue on to this, you know, I think we made it clear. Sorry. Yes. Uh, so there are our thoughts on Army of Ghosts. Let us know what you think. Do, do you think that the Cybermen are better than the Daleks? Or do you think the Daleks are better than the Cybermen? Which is the better villain? Email us at whonewpodcast at gmail.com. That concludes our episode. We will see you next time for the conclusion of Series 2, When the Future Becomes the Present. You've just listened to an episode of Who Knew? Our wonderful theme music is by Michael Grady. Find him on Facebook at The Universe Explodes. All our episodes are engineered by our very own Auburn. Find me at auburnbinkley.com. You can find this show in several places. Follow us on Twitter at Who Knew Podcasts. Subscribe, review, and listen to us on iTunes and Stitcher. Or our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Who Knew Podcast. All our episodes are on Who Knew Podcast.com. You can leave comments there or email us at Who Knew Podcast at gmail.com. This podcast is inspired by Doctor Who, the longest running sci fi show in history and especially the revival spearheaded by Russell T. Davis. Thanks to Russell, Sidney Newman, Verity Lambert, Ron Grainer, and all those involved in the adventures of our favorite Time Lord. Your work continues to inspire and entertain. We're good. We're rolling. And you did yourself? But yeah. I am. Um, I was still talking. <laughs> I'm just watching the meters. Milk. Really, Frank? Milk was a bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, oh, so I, was... no. <laughs> I didn't want milk. I don't know why I poured it. I wanted the Pepsi. <laughs> oh, good gosh. You want it with the donut? <laughs> oh, um, I think that's why I was thinking it. <laughs> yeah. Because I'd given that to you. That would have been our first on screen <laughs> or on <laughs> mic nose. <laughs> this is key. What are we doing? What are we doing? We're doing Army of Ghosts. Hello.